Joining me now is Minnesota Democratic Congressman Dean Phillips. He won in a swing district, took over a Republican seat, won a Republican seat in 2018. So, Congressman, welcome to the show. Good to be with you, um, Chuck. You heard Congressman Moulton there. Why not? Why is it mine, not the time? Well, a couple of reasons, Chuck. I just completed a 36 tour, of a city tour of my district just last week, and I asked people all around my district, what do you want me focusing on? Uh, and they said infrastructure, reducing prescription drug pricing, uh, health care. Uh, you know, impeachment was not the focus uh, that my constituents asked me to be uh, focused on right now. Uh, with that said, as Seth said, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. We have committees assigned to provide oversight uh, over the executive branch. I think they're doing that. I like how we're doing it. We're being methodical. We're being principled. We're also being patient. Uh, and our patience is uh, its getting close to the end, to be forthright. But we can do both. But I can tell you, when we take an oath of office to the Constitution, we also take an oath to the people mm -hmm. of this country. And that should be the determinant of how we proceed. What is in the best interest I of the country? And I'm just simply not there yet. You know, it's funny. I, I keep saying, okay, what would Madison say? What would he be arguing mm -hmm. under these circumstances? And sure. I don't think it's an easy call, right? You have the way our process works. We have a more direct election of a president, whether we want to call it that or not, than we did over 200 odd years ago. Um, and at the same time, um, there was this belief that Congress is Article One for a reason. So what do you think the founders would have wanted? Wait for the election um, or, you know, deal with what you have to deal with with what's in front of you? Well, some of, some, of who, some of those who participate in the Constitutional Convention argued that it is the election itself that should be the judge and jury uh, of our presidents. And we do have an election coming up in 18 months. I would like to see 150 million people serve as judge and jury. That said, uh, I, wish, I hope we continue our legal proceedings. Uh, I think we need to ascertain more facts. And if those facts lead us uh, to clear evidence uh, of criminal activity and right. obstruction, then we absolutely should proceed. But we're not there yet. And I want to be cautious and methodical. I think that in the best interest what of makes the country, it not Chuck, there? That's where most people De are. Define not there yet. Is it because there's not one thing? Is it he's yet to defy a court order? Is it what is the not there? Because I hear that phrase, but it's it's a very undefined phrase. Okay, then what is there? Like what? When do we know when we're there? Well, first and foremost, we're doing exactly what we should be doing, which is deliberate. This is a deliberative body. I respect the opinions of all my colleagues on both sides of the aisle. Uh, there hasn't been uh, at least a court order that has been violated yet. If that happens, that surely will move the needle uh, in my case, and I'm sure many others. Uh, we are just about to receive documents that we've been asking for for some time. We have not yet uh, uh, seen testimony from people that I believe should be uh, providing that testimony to our committees. Uh, if those things don't happen and we cannot ascertain the facts, by all means, that may be our last option uh, to proceed with impeachment. But again, back to what's in the best interest of the country, you know, most polls indicate that 60 percent of the country is opposed to impeachment right now. Uh, we should be paying attention to what most people uh, are talking about. Now, by the way, there's what cable news is talking about, and then there's what people are talking about in cul-de-sacs, and sometimes it's a little bit different. No, I know. Social media, cable news can be in one place. Uh, and as we're finding out with the polls and Joe Biden, perhaps the rest of the Democratic Party is in another. But let me uh, let me ask you this. You talked about the polls. Is there a risk of looking like you're only avoiding impeachment because of politics, that it's about that, in fact, you're you're making the investigation process more politicized by being afraid of essentially the, the constitutional nuclear option? Uh, Chuck, in fact, just the opposite. If I was looking at this through a political lens, I would have called for impeachment months ago. Uh, I'm looking at this through an American lens, and I'm talking with my Republican colleagues, my Democratic colleagues. I'm talking about uh, talking with libertarians, Republicans, and Democrats in my home district, and, and I'm having these conversations every day, uh, and I'm simply doing what I think is in the best interest of this country. I'm not saying no to impeachment. I'm mm -hmm. saying we have more to do, and by the way, I think, I think our leadership in the Democratic Party has been quite thoughtful so far, methodical, principled, and patient. In fact, I know some think too patient. Uh, I still have a little bit left, but not a whole left, uh, left in the tank, I can tell you that. I, I, speaking of losing patience, apparently Justin Amash, a Republican from, from Michigan, uh, he has some more thoughts on this. I'm going to put up one comment he made. He said, some of the president's actions were inherently corrupt. Other actions were corrupt and therefore impeachable because the president took them to serve his own interests. Uh, does Justin Amash's uh, announcement basically... Uh, endorsing the idea that the president is, is, should be uh, subject of an impeachment inquiry. 
Does that make it easier for you, harder? Is that, is that the type of patience that you think that this is what patience leads to, is you get more people coming forward? Well, I, I, I respect uh, Mr. Masha's uh, courage because it certainly takes courage to be on, the only one in the Republican conference that has come to that conclusion. I certainly believe uh, from experience and in my heart that others have come to that conclusion privately. Uh, but as I've said, we don't take an oath to our party. We take an oath to our country and to the Constitution. Uh, I'm surprised that there are not more Republicans that see it the same way. Uh, but I, again, but I you don't see it that way yet. I mean, I in well, fairness. <laughs> well, I, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it a little bit differently every day. And as I've said, my patience is is running out. And look, I want what's in the best interest of this country. I'd right. like to think everybody here wants the same thing. There's a lot about this presidency uh, that is remarkable and not in a positive way. Uh, now, and the Constitution provides a mechanism for impeachment. It does not demand or require it. I, based on the facts that I know right now, uh, we may learn things in the coming days or weeks that will right. push me over the edge. But I think it is in our nation's best interest, A, to be methodical, and most importantly, to remember that uh, there may be a storm brewing right. on cable news and on Twitter and whatnot, but <laughs> in neighborhoods throughout this country, people yeah. want us focused on the things that we are sent here to do. And Chuck, to remind it you, and you well know, we've passed a lot of bills here in the House in the last four months. And many are sitting on Mr. McConnell's desk in the Senate. We are doing that work. We're going to continue to do that do you work. Think it, do, you think the talk, to do. do you think the investigations and talk of impeachment have overshadowed that work? Uh, oh, in the news, they've absolutely overshadowed shadowed that work because the fact is we have done a lot and we're going to be doing a lot and we can continue to do a lot as, as long as we proceed down this path. Right. If we proceed with impeachment, uh, it will suck the remaining...